here is our probability and Venn diagram worksheet. We're only going to deal with the Venn diagram portion of it at this time. Uh, we'll revisit the probability portion in module 6. It says a clinical study of a new non-drowsy prescription medication for allergy relief was tested on 500 patients. The following table details the adverse effects of this new drug and we have all the different adverse effects that different patients experience. Some of them only experienced one type of adverse effect. Others experienced two types and there's a few people down at the bottom that experienced as many as three different adverse effects. And our task is to construct a Venn diagram illustrating how many patients are in all the different regions. Because while we know that 15 total patients experienced a headache, we don't know of those 15, just by looking at this number, how many of them also experienced just a headache and say fatigue. We know that three people experienced fatigue and headache, but how many of them didn't also experience something else? So what we're going to try to do is figure out in all the different regions of this particular Venn diagram how many individual patients are there. And we know there's a total of 500 patients, so the uh, entire box for our Venn diagram is going to represent 500. So this problem is similar to problems you would find in section 2.5 of your textbook, uh, except the ones in the textbook are much simpler in terms of the number of sets. Ours has many sets involved, more than three. But the procedure is still the same. I'm going to start at the bottom with the patients who experienced multiple adverse effects. And we see that headaches, dry mouth, and nervousness, there were three patients who experienced all three of those things. So if I have a set representing each one of these side effects, there needs to be three people in the triple intersection point of those sets. So I'm going to move this aside and draw three sets. We have headaches, dry mouth, and nervousness. And we're told that three people experienced all three of these. So we have three people in this region of our Venn diagram. If you go to the next line up on your sheet, you'll find that one person experienced nervousness, nausea, and dizziness. So we need a triple intersection point between those three sets. We already have nervousness but we've not drawn a set for nausea or dizziness. So I'm going to insert those two sets down here. We'll call this one nausea and this one dizziness. And we know that there is one person who experienced all three of those. Now working our way back up the list, we find that five people experienced headaches and nervousness. So the overlap or intersection between headaches and nervousness is right here. And we need to know that there's a total of five people in that region. Well, we've already used three people in this portion. So that means we must put two right here so that the total intersection between headache and nervousness is five. The next line up says that four people experienced dry mouth and headache. Intersection between dry mouth and headache would be right here. Total of four, we've already used three there, so we must put one person here so that it adds up to four. Next line up says dry mouth and nervousness is seven people. Here's dry mouth, here's nervousness, here's their intersection. So both of these regions together must be seven. We've already used three which means four can go in that region to make it seven. Continuing on up, four people experience nervousness and nausea. Here's nervousness, here's nausea, here's their intersection. We've got one here, which means we need three there for a total of four. Three people experience nervousness and dizziness which would be this region, nervousness and dizziness. We've used one there. We're supposed to have a total of three, so I'll put two in there. Above that, we have four people experience nausea and dizziness. That would be 
the intersection right here, these two regions, nausea and dizziness, that needs to be four people. I've used one, which means three go there. And then, if we continue to move up, we run into a new set, insomnia and headache. All right, so we have headache over here. I, I've yet to have insomnia, so I'm going to add another circle over here and call this insomnia. And we're told that five people experience both of those. So five people are in that region. Fatigue and headache is three. So now once again, we have another new set. I'm gonna to try to add that one in up here at the top. We'll call this fatigue. So we have three people in the intersection of headache and fatigue. Now the next line up says that there were two people who experienced sore throat and thirst. Now, so far we've not used either one of those categories, nor do they have any other intersection with any other sets. So somewhere over here to the side, we need to add in two new sets for sore throat and thirst and we're told that two people experienced both of those. Okay, the rest of the way up are just individual adverse effects. We're told that set, uh, six people experienced thirst. Well, we've already drawn our thirst circle and used up two of those people in the intersection, which means there must be four people then in this region, the region where they only experienced thirst. Moving up, we get anorexia, seven people. We've yet to draw an anorexia circle, so we'll make a new set. Here's anorexia, and we know that there are seven people there. Continuing up, we have seven people in the sore throat category. Here's the sore throat circle. We've used two here, so that means five must be in that region to add up to seven. There were 15 people who experience nausea. Now if we go back over to our nausea circle, um, that's four regions currently, and we've used three, one, and three, seven total people in our nausea circle already. There needs to be 15 total, which means we need eight people there to add up to 15. There are 11 people who experienced fatigue. Here's fatigue up here at the top. We had three in the intersection of headache and fatigue, which means to add up to 11, we need eight people who experienced only fatigue. 13 people experienced dizziness down here. We've used two, three, six people, meaning seven are left to go in that region so that it adds up to 13. 20 people experienced nervousness. That's our massive circle here in the middle. It needs to totally add up to 20. We've used four, seven, nine, 10, 15. So five people in that inner region. Seven people experienced drowsiness. Now drowsiness, I've also not used to this point. So I'm going to need another circle all by itself. I'll put it down in this corner. This is um, drowsiness, DY for drowsy. Okay, so we've got seven people in that circle. 10 people experienced dry mouth. Here's our dry mouth circle. We've used four, seven, eight, so two people right here. And 11 people experienced insomnia. This is our insomnia circle. We've used five, so six goes there to make 11. And lastly, 15 people experienced a headache. Here's our headache circle. And we've used three, four, seven, nine, 14 people. There's supposed to be a total of 15. So one person experienced only a headache. Now our Venn diagram is almost complete, but this is not uh, completely finished because we're told that there are 500 patients total that were um, given this clinical study and we need to figure out how many of them did not have any adverse effects. So the next process is to add up all the numbers we have in there already and see what's left over. All right, so eight plus three plus six. Plus. 
I get 89, if I added that in correctly, you can check me on my math later, um, 89 total patients who experienced some type of adverse effect. There were 500 total patients. So if we take 500 and subtract our 89, we end up with 411 patients who experience no adverse effects. Which means that out here, in this region, we have 411 patients. So the vast majority of patients actually did not experience any adverse effects at all. There was actually small numbers of patients who experienced these adverse effects. If you simply add up the numbers in the chart, you're going to get a number a lot bigger than 89 because it's double counting people. And so that's why we have to draw the Venn diagram in order to split out who exactly suffers from which particular adverse effect and who of them experience multiple adverse effects. So I hope that was a sufficient explanation for how to draw this Venn diagram.